All right, my Scorpio friends, Taurus is your opposite sign, as you may know. And so Taurus is an important energy for you. It describes your mirror reflection. As a Scorpio identified person, um, Taurus is your counterpart. And in this placement of your solar seventh house, uh, Taurus can also describe important others in your life, as well as a kind of general social experience of being mirrored or being reflected in the relational realm. Um, this can also be a place of projection and fantasy, as well as the emanation or extension of your own energy and how you put yourself out to other people or how other people are perceiving you. And in that kind of weird echo chamber feedback kind of way, uh, it can be a way that you perceive yourself being perceived. <laughs> um, so Taurus season is uh, highlighting the changing nature of your relationships right now. And I'm going to say in particular, we're thinking about one-on-one -on -one relationships, committed partnerships of all kinds. That includes romantic as well as business partnerships. Also, some people are very committed to their enemies. Um, this kind of relationship happens so frequently um, and is really uh, quite, you know, um, on high display, like in the world, right? Where people are just committed to hating each other. And in the commitment to othering, they're totally attached, right? It's like they're completely attached to that arrangement. And we can even call it a partnership of opposition. So consider if there are any people in your life who you just totally fucking hate their guts. Um, and if you obsess about them or, you know, fixate on them as some Scorpios maybe do, I don't know why I would think that I probably saw it in a meme somewhere. I'm sure it's not you. Um, maybe just consider those people as well. And then consider just relationships in general. So you are changing a lot right now. The nature of your relationships uh, is changing. Now, the thing about Scorpio um, as well as all the other fixed signs, but especially Scorpio. The thing about Scorpio is that you can make up your mind about someone or something and then never change it, right? And so if somebody crosses you once, some of you are like, you're dead to me forever. Or if you decide that someone is great, then you stop sometimes like seeing them for who they are because you're just so committed to why you think they're great. Everybody does this, okay? Like it's not it's not like other signs don't, but Scorpio has um, a lot of weight that they put into their relationships. And there's a kind of feeling of being anchored um, that, that Scorpio can have in their body, particularly when it comes to relational dynamics. And that doesn't always mean you know, lifelong love commitments. Like I said, it could be that you are totally committed to hating somebody's guts or you're completely committed to the decision that you made about somebody like 40 years ago. And meanwhile, they've been changing and evolving and so have you. And that decision might be irrelevant at this point, but you made it 40 years ago. And so it's just in your body and you haven't questioned it. But now is the time to question what you have believed to be true about your relationships and to allow for uh, things to shift around. And this doesn't have to be like wildly destabilizing. It doesn't have to mean that uh, big endings or beginnings are happening, but there I think is um, room for you right now to adjust the ways that you are in relationship. And again, this is in general as well as specific, but the reason for you to adjust actually has a lot more to do with you than it does with the other people or even the idea of the relationships themselves. So the reason for you to adjust has to do with your own growth. It has to do with your own happiness and your own health. It might be that it is just time to bury the hatchet you know, some Scorpios out there, it's like, you just need to let it go. 
it might be time for you to recognize that someone or some way of being that you've been completely committed to for a really long time um, actually needs to change a little bit. And how you want to be in the relational dynamic, um, it, it, it has to evolve. And the reason that it has to evolve is because the way that it has been is not serving you in a functional way. And I mean functional because something is either taking too much energy or not giving enough. Something is um, causing some kind of distress, mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual distress. Um, you are unsatisfied, right? You're not uh, feeling sated. I don't know what that means for you. Um, your values are mismatched and you're recognizing that. And when your values are mismatched, then it's hard for you to actually invest in what is valuable to you. And it could feel like your growth is being stunted or something if you continue to go along in this way or make those same kinds of agreements or think about yourself um, you know, as the kind of person that would X, Y, or Z. Because again, remember, this is your relationships in general, as well as your relationships with specific people. And that can include all levels of relationship, as well as family members and total strangers, right? So there's something about how you are feeling in your own body, in your own life, in your own energy, that you want to feel a certain kind of way or don't want to feel certain kinds of ways, and you're recognizing that in order to feel or to not feel how you want or don't want to feel, that a re that relational dynamics need to shift. And it might be that relational belief systems need to shift, or philosophies need to shift. Now we have a full moon in your sign on April 23rd. And this full moon is really pushing on you. It is really pushing on the relational sphere and things need to shift. And you uh, can, can find support for shifting right now by expanding your sense of foundational stability. Now, particularly when it comes to one-on-one -on -one dynamics, we can uh, pour so much a concept of stability into other people. And I would say, you know, particularly for like life partners and family members and things like that, but also for business partners and, you know, fuck it also for frenemies, right? Like, like if you have stabilized yourself around being in opposition to someone else, and a lot of people do this, I talked about this in the tourist season, uh, overview. It's like people bond over shared opposition. And that is an unstable bond because not everybody wants to devote their entire life project to being against something. At some point, it might feel more generative to be for something than to, again, to be against something, right? So this is a period of time that needs you to widen your support structures. If you have been thinking about one particular person as being the center of your world, um, you need more people. You might need more than people. You might need trees. You might need mountains. You might need four-legged friends. You might need spiritual allies. But that one person cannot be the crux of your stability. If you have been thinking about one kind of relationship as the be all end all of some kind of success, like, oh, if I just, you know, have this kind of lover, then like the, everything's going to make sense and I'm going to be happy. You're wrong. You need friends. You need family members. You need spiritual allies. You know, you 
you want to diversify right now. And the more that you can feel that you have stability that is multidimensional and that is uh, multidirectional, the easier it is to make changes in your relationships and to allow the changes that are happening anyway to happen in the best ways that they possibly can. Um, you want to make decisions right now that are in service to your life energy. Your life energy is finite. It is not infinite, right? And pronounce that word. It's not infinite. Um, your life energy uh, is finite. You have limited resource and capacity, and you need to be using your energy in ways uh, right now that actually serve and contribute to what fills your heart with the most joy that it possibly can. And so what is that in 2024 when, uh, you know, climate chaos is here and war is here and suffering is here? What actually fills your heart with some kind of joy? I'm going to say, I think that there's something about creativity, about expression. I think that for some of you, uh, it might have something to do with your children or with other ways that you serve and nurture life in the world. Um, it is really important for you right now to feel yourself absolutely devoted to what fills your heart with joy and with a sense of beauty and wonder and awe and possibility and what helps you uh, imagine that's what you want to be focusing on. And if the ways that you are in relationship with people feel like they put boxes around you or have you like constraining your sense of possibility or not really being in your joy, then I just want to ask you why. Like, why? It might not be the other people. It might be you and how you've decided to be in those relationships. So why are you making those decisions? It might be the other people. Why are you choosing to be with those people? There's like 9 billion people on the planet. There are other people you could hang out with. This is the time to make decisions in your relationships that allow you to feel uh, more access to joy, more access to authenticity and to truth. I know that there's a lot of suffering right now. I know that there's a lot of pain. Inside of suffering and pain, people make art. People make love. You want to be relating in ways that allow you to access that kind of energy. Around the new moon in Taurus, uh, May 7th, be discerning. Be discerning about what is actually happening. Sometimes things happen that feel new and different that aren't new and different. Give space and time to your emotions and experiences right now. If something is actually new and different, it will make itself known over the course of the following weeks and months. If something is not actually new and different and it's just a moment of feeling like it's new and different, it will make itself known fairly quickly that it's not actually new and different. I'm going to say that by the end of Taurus season, even by uh, the 20th of May, it's fairly clear. Is this new and different or is this not new and different? Some of you around the new moon, like you think that something new and different is happening, but it's kind of more of the same thing. Don't let yourself be fooled. Give things time. And this is really the trick right now. Give things time in, not in an avoidant way, not in I'm going to put it on the back burner way, not in the kind of way that fixed signs can do, which is like, well, I'll just keep going and, you know, something will change eventually. Give things time to feel it out. That's what I mean. Give things time to meditate with them. Really try and be with the experiences that you're having, especially when it comes to 
how you are relating in the outer world and what that means for your energy, for your attention, for your vitality. And notice how things make you feel and give them a little bit of time. And by time, I mean at least a week, right? A, a couple of days, like before you respond, before you say yes or no, like give things a minute to feel it out. There are a lot of new opportunities coming in for you um, in the end of Taurus season. A lot of these new opportunities are definitely new. New ways of feeling, new ways of relating, new possibilities. Habits run deep. Even when we get new opportunities, sometimes we can meet them in ways that shape those opportunities into the exact same thing. So give yourself time with what feels like new energy so that you can also continue to respond in new ways.